This playthrough is rated E10+. Every 100 years, the forces of good mysteriously start to weaken. Thus the power of Dracula starts to revive itself. His power grows stronger and stronger every 100 years. Dracula has revived many times, however, his sinister actions have been consistently thwarted by the Belmont family. It's been 100 years since the last confrontation between Dracula and the Belmont family. But now the serenity of Transylvania is being threatened by destructive forces. On a dark and eerie night, Dracula rose from his grave to unleash his destructive power over the countryside. Once again, Simon Belmont is called upon to destroy Dracula. With only his whip and courage, he sets out to restore peace to Transylvania. Are you all ready to get Super Castlevania 4? I know I am. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Volumer here on another new game from my library. And it's Super Castlevania 4 for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. They're probably wondering, where are the other Super Castlevania games? This is the fourth one, right? Well, Nintendo had a weird thing back in the day where they had to put super, uh, like a lot of major titles for, uh, for the Super Nintendo system had to have this, the name Super in it. Not all of them, but a lot of them did. So it was like Super Mario, Super Castlevania, Super World Baseball, so so forth and so on. It was a very weird naming convention. But uh, so it kind of put it out of line. So yeah, this is the fourth Castlevania in the main series. Although technically, from what I understand, this was almost kind of like a soft reboot, despite the intro saying Simon Belmont had to pull this uh, whip out again, uh, despite this being like kind of like a like i said a reboot of, the, of castlevania one and two and technically two doesn't count in this matter but yeah, it doesn't matter more castlevania with simon one of the more famous belmonts but anyway one thing we can do is we can go to option menu if you want to change your whip setup around b to jump y to whip r for item uh, item uh you can do sound change the sound to stereo or mono you can also listen to the sound effects here if you press the b button you can uh listen to different uh sound setup here I mean, we'll hear all these eventually, but I just want to show it off. And then um, the sound effects are, or effect is basically sound effects. So you get all the whip sounds and everything like that. Pretty cool. But anyway, it's time to play Super Castlevania 4 and start on Simon's Belmont's reimagined adventure for the Super Nintendo. 
And, you know, if if I hadn't already played Castlevania Legends, I'd almost say this is one of the easier Castlevanias to play, um, just because of the uh, the way the game was presented. Uh, when Nintendo came out with the Super Nintendo system, it really like they I wouldn't say they dumbed down the gameplay, but they toned it down a lot, so it's not as it's not Nintendo hard anymore. They gaming development became a lot more polished by this point so not every game had to be as hard as it was in an arcade but yeah we start off the adventure with ca uh, typical castlevania uh, action left to right jump whip however there's a new function in this game uh let me see i'll show it off when there's something more reasonable and i got the dagger item pretty early in the game and huh, jump up here oh and we got uh they're forcing us into castlevania i don't want to get in there no but i must the adventure calls me but I don't want to go in there. There's nothing for me there. No. No. I wonder if I can actually jump up there. No, you can't. Okay. But after that harrowing start, yeah, we get the actual music to start. Yeah, it starts off slow before, but... All right. But yeah, the reason why I say it's so easy is because, you know, like I said, it takes a lot to really die in this game. You can do it. I mean, there's the obviously the, the, the pitfalls and everything like that in previous games. But it's, I don't know, just something about the difficulty. But yeah, one of the new functions of this game is there's kind of Super Mario kind of coin, did this first where you could have two different planes of existence in this game. Yeah, this is brand new, like, uh, at least at the time. It, it blew our minds as kids. We loved it. Um, unfortunately, I don't know why I'm going all the way here. There's nothing I can really do with that. But anyway, um... Yeah, most of the enemies, most of the enemies' patterns are super simple. Usually, most of them go down a couple of hits, and I don't know. Like, I still like this game, but there's a lot of functions of this game that were probably not thought out well when it came to game design. And we got the typical stairs. Now, interesting enough, in this game, I actually don't. For a lot of the stairs, I actually don't have to press up to go up the stairs. If you don't want to go up the stairs, usually you can like jump through them and stuff like that, and. Uh, not do it but yeah if you just want to walk up the stairs yeah you just walk up the stairs no no ifs ands or buts no i shouldn't even got hit by that bat <laughs> like i said this game's so easy that getting hit i shouldn't have got hit at all i guess it goes to show that i'm just not a very good player oh yeah we got the cross there so we could defeat all the enemies oh right i was gonna save save the description for this well now i'll show it off so uh one of the new features of super castlevania which they I don't think they ever bring it back is the ability to directionally hit the whip so you can hit in all different directions. Now you're probably thinking that's a really cool ability and why didn't they use it often? I think the main reason why they didn't use it often is it kind of makes a lot of the sub weapons kind of pointless. Like if you can just hit the whip in any directions, it doesn't really matter. Um, like the ax, like the axe, the whole point of using the axe was to get a directional attack from, uh, aw, well, all right, I'm grabbing it. Anyway, get meat in the wall there. but. Yeah, like if you, you have the axe, well, I could just directionally hit it. Now, obviously, if the creature's far away, sure. But I don't know. I felt like doing directional hits, yeah, really disregard the ability of the of the, of the the sub-weapon. So I'm kind of glad that they never kept that as a main thing, even though a lot of people like that about this game, which makes sense. I mean, a whip, whip can be manipulated in multiple different directions. But as a gameplay standard, if you're going to do that, you need to do something to the sub-weapons to make them different so that way... Um, that way they're useful in some way. I don't know. Like I said, you can use them. It's just, I don't know, just the way that's designed. They could have thought of it a bit better. Then we've got a new feature in this one. We've got the uh, the hooks. What they do is allow us to swing across certain locations. Oh, we've got a man trying to beat us to death. Didn't expect me to whip you, did you? Anyway, you just use the whip button, hit it, hold on to it, and then let go when you want to get off of that location. You can keep swinging if you want to. There's going to be levels later on that that utilize this, so keep that in mind. Now on these stairs, I did actually have to go down because there was, because you could walk over them. But on this stair, I didn't have to walk down. So going up the stairs, no, up the, uh, going up the stairs and going down the stairs. And yeah, there's quite a few chances to like get um, heals and uh, and invincibility in this game. Like it's like so plentiful, it's like kind of silly almost. But you know, as we play the game, we'll see all, all that the game has to offer. And like I said, I do like this game. It's not my favorite Castlevania just because it's way too easy. Overall, anyway. That's how my my thoughts on it, anyway. Yeah, we got more of the bone towers there, as, as you saw there. Um, and from what I recall, there's very little in the way of, like, 
because it's kind of weird in this game that we go from Castlevania 3 that has all these paths to Super uh, Super Castlevania, which is pretty straightforward for the most part. Um, no much deviation. It's like, I guess they were going to want to go true to form. Uh, we got decapitated uh, horse heads. They must have been watching uh, Godfather when they when they designed this level or something with that. No, they were they were from previous uh, levels of Castlevania before. I got a heart there. Nice. Oh yeah, and, you, and this game does have the double and triple um, numbers as they go there. It improves the power of the sub weapon, as well as being able to use them multiple ones at once. So if you have a two, you can throw two at the same time, or roughly together. If you have three, you can do three, and the sub weapon is more powerful. And of course, I kill it with this uh, watch. But the thing is, I don't really need a sub weapon for this boss because the whip is good enough, you know. But we have the clock if we want to slow down time, or stop time, I mean. Oh yeah, and there's now, in this game, they introduced a small meat, so now you can hit the candles and get, possibly get a small, uh, uh, of their spirits right there. Get small meat, which is a little bit of uh, healing. It's like a couple of blocks of heal, like three or four or something like that. Um, yeah, they did everything they could to make this game, like, user-friendly. Except I died from that, which I shouldn't have. Yeah, that was kind of stupid. I told you, only I could die to something like this. Anyone else, viewers? Anyone like yourselves? No way. You would not die at all. Uh, yeah, actually, I pre-play tested this. Actually, I play tested this, this only this level just to get a gist of, like, um, just to remind myself of the controls and everything like that. And I didn't die when I got to the boss. So it goes to show, like, the, the Let's Play curse, where as soon as you record, you do something stupid. Uh, and, uh, and everyone in the world sees it. Yeah, I should've just killed this thing. Like, it's easy to do that, so. I did the one thing that probably could've, should've never happened to a, a standard player. Maybe a newbie or something like that. We can't, we can't save the world uh, with the help of a noob. Well. Anyway, we're at the first boss right now. Guess how easy this guy's gonna be beat. Guess. Anyway, we got a, um, guy on a, uh, skeleton horse. Alright, he, his skeleton horse is down. Now we got the man with the javelin. All right, and he's dead. Probably could have done that without taking any damage, too. Yay! Yeah, like I said, this game is like super easy, dude. But uh, it'll it will get harder, but it doesn't get that much harder. Like I said, I could have easily di done this without dying, but I was I just got too cocky. At least they kept the map um, in this game, so uh, a little bit more detailed than the previous ones. On our way to the next area. Yep, we got a sub-boss there on our way to the end of the level. Well, actually, technically it's the boss, and we just ended in that uh, waterway. But anyway, on to stage two. I really like the, I do actually really like the music. I mean, obviously, all most of... Uh, I mean, you got shrub men, we got uh, zombie hands trying to hit us from underground. You know, all you have to do is hit them or try to jump. If you get caught, just jump around and try to avoid the noise. Um, but yeah, the music in this game is very catchy. Um, it's not my favorite of the music, but like that scene where it does the, like I uh, I did at the beginning where it talks about Dracula um, uh, coming back. Now that's like some creepy music right there. Like actually people in videos online have used that, like when they want to set up a creepy ambience, they, they'll use that, that uh, soundtrack from uh, from the entrance there to kind of show the creepiness of it. One of the more well-known ones is uh, it's a animated uh, video um, from a guy called uh, Lumpy, I think, Lumpy Touch or something like that. Um, he did a series, he got famous for doing a series of animated videos about Gorefield, which is basically what if you mixed uh, Garfield with the Cthulian uh, mythos and stuff like that. And uh, it's pr uh, animation is very solid on that. You should check it out if you want. I think his name was Lumpy Touch, something like that. If you look up like Gorefield or uh, something like that, you'll you'll get what I mean. Uh, but he uses that music in some of the scenes. So, Any more shrubmen over here. But yeah, I mean I'm glad this game exists in the series. It's just I just wish it wasn't so easy. But then again, this this. Uh, we got zombies here. This is probably my favorite. The, or, uh, the Super Nintendo is probably my favorite console. That or maybe the PlayStation 1's got some really good games for it. I don't know. But, but Super Nintendo and PlayStation, definitely the first PlayStation, definitely have a um, 
a lot of remembrance for me and just like a lot of very solid titles. You're probably saying, well, shouldn't it be modern day PC or something like that because of all the options? Well, one, I mean, I didn't grow that up that with that until years later, obviously, and that's more modern times. It's all about nostalgia, my friend, but I still think uh, Super Nintendo has still is. Uh, because this, yeah, this console did have a lot of shovelware, or not as much shovelware as the original Nintendo, so there's not as many bad games on this one as old Nintendo. I mean, they're still bad games. Don't get me wrong, every system has those. It just doesn't seem as obvious in uh, this one that Far tried to get me, apparently, so. But yeah, uh, and yeah, it didn't sink to the bottom, but I could have got, uh, uh, but there's a uh, mud there so we could jump out of it so it doesn't insta kill me or whatever. And we got, uh, I forgot what these armadillo things are called. You can tell they were trying to do like a different, like they kept the same music of Castlevania, but you could tell that they were utilizing the sound trip of the Super Nintendo to try and get a different sound on it. Actually, the Super, the Sega Genesis version of, of uh, Castlevania is pretty, got that kind of same quality. Although Sega Genesis definitely has a, that that different feel, makes it very, very good. But I'll, I will play uh, the Sega Genesis one eventually. Uh, I don't know if it'll be this year or next year. We'll see what happens. We'll see how long it takes me to beat this. Like I said, this game isn't long. It's longer than the pre than the Super Ni or the Nintendo ones, uh, mainly because of just how many stages they added, not for difficulty preventing me from going through the levels as as efficiently, you know. That began to life. Yeah, see how easy that was? Like, very little challenge. I mean, really the only time I might die will probably be from uh, um, falling and stuff like that. Oh, we got Medusa here. Yeah, she's got an ability where she can uh, uh, stone you if you let her hit. But yeah, she's another case of I probably could have taken no damage from her. I was just being cocky, you know. But anyway, yeah, she uh, her big thing is she throws out her hairs to attack you while she stones you. That's where all the damage can come in. Um, yeah, and the thing is our whip does a really good amount of damage just by itself. Like I said, you probably don't even need the sub weapons. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, is this, well, I guess, is this game always going to be easy or is this one, like one of the previous games where if you beat it, you get a hard mode afterwards? And that's actually true. I could have, I, maybe I should have played started the game on hard mode first. There is a way to do that. Uh, maybe I'll show that when I after I beat Dracula. I'll show you how to get hard mode if you want to just jump straight into it. If you want a more of a challenge, and it's the same in the previous game where um, some enemies take long more to hit. Um, they'll add more enemies to the stage, so forth and so on. So it does ramp up the challenge, but I don't remember it being that much more difficult uh, personally. But like I said it has been a while since I played it, so I might be misremembering a little bit. But yeah, we're going down the little waterway here. Gotta watch out for the bats that very slowly come after us. Watch out. Watch out. Yeah, we got, did we get another life already? Wow. Get, don't touch me, grabby hands. Give me back. Stop it. You took my hearts away. Oh, wait. I have a billion hearts. That's fine. Whatever. We got man bats over here or whatever. Actually, I don't actually remember what the name of all the creatures are. I'm just saying stuff that seems reasonable to me. I know back in the day, and I probably could look at the manual for this if I actually want to get some of the creatures, because a lot of times they'll tell you what the creature names are um, for it. But anyway, we yeah, we already beat stage two. We're already on stage three, so uh, I think there's like nine plus stages in this game, so I'm already... Or, is it, or maybe it's a little bit more than nine. Now I'm trying to remember. But anyway, there's there's a bit few more stages than the previous games, I believe, but they're a bit longer. At least I feel they're longer. Anyway, got the whole acid drips here, so watch out. Don't get don't get wet. Make sh make sure to bring a towel. Let's see, we got some mud men over there. Yeah, they uh, break apart and they make the s frame rate slow down when they do it because there's too much stuff on screen. Yeah, back in the day, viewers for user for those of you who are younger, uh, back in the day, the processors could only handle uh, even though they tried to test the game and design to make sure these run smoothly. They're still times where within the design or something would happen that would slow down the frame rate because too much stuff was on screen. Wasn't I'm trying to remember where they really utilized frame rate efficiently. Well, it probably wasn't even until like the PS... Actually, no, even the PS2 had some issues. Maybe even... I mean, that might be more of a modern thing where they kind of sort of fix that. I mean, there's still issues in like certain PC games about that, but nothing that's like... That's usually games that are very poorly implemented. Usually a lot of, in, uh, uh, weirdly enough, a lot of Unity games are like that, where they, uh, um, 
but I'd say you could do that, so. Now there is a, I think there's supposed to be, oops, eh, oh well. I'm trying to remember where it is. There's supposed to be a secret area around here where you can get some, like, food and everything like that. Let me see if I can, I believe it's in stage three one, if I recall. Oh, maybe it's over here. There it is. Okay, this is the one of the secret stages. I mean, there are other minor secrets over the place, but this is one of those that you can easily, easily miss. Just grab all the secret stuff. Yes, yes, yes. And that's pretty much it. But still, if you need uh, meat and all this other stuff, because you can't have any pudding if you don't eat your meat. So, anyway. So, yeah, let's keep going. So, I thought it was around here somewhere. I don't remember every single secret of these games, but it's always nice to recall where everything is. I mean, I mean, can you already tell viewers that I'm just like blazing through this game like at a breakneck speed? It's insane. Didn't do this. The only other game to do that was Legends because of just that game. You just had to go into burst mode and just beat the game. So, oh. now let's slow down the frame rate again. Slow it down to crawl. Then again, I guess every game should have, like, or series should always have that one game in the series that's either easy or something that someone could ju jump into and then get easy access so that way they, then they could play the other versions of the games. I think that was the idea, if I remember correctly. I, I don't remember all the details, but I believe uh, they were trying to make games easier, so it was supposed to be more of a chance for people to get into the games, and that way then they could possibly introduce harder games, but... The problem with trying to introduce it to everyone is that it dumbs down the difficulty for everyone, so. Oh, well, there's still a lot to like about this game. I know I'm complaining a lot, but I do really enjoy this game. All right, on to the next section of area three, two, and then whatever these things are. I don't think you can actually kill these things. Uh-oh, whoa! Was that, was, why that, why that bridge fall down? Does that mean something's gonna happen? No, nah, nothing's gonna happen, right? Of course, see? Nothing's going on. Now you got like plant creatures, all the other stuff all around here. Awesome. They will die. By, by the Belmont clan hand. Yeah, for being a mechanic, you don't see this thing too often, the, uh, the, the grips or latches or whatever you wanna call them. I think there's only there are only like a handful of levels. There is one level specifically that does utilize them quite a bit. We'll get to that eventually. Don't know if it'll be today or tomorrow or whatever. We'll see. This is one of those things I don't really plan out exactly like how I want to, like how long the episode's gonna run or or stuff like that. Oh yeah, there's a way to. Um, yeah, I almost forgot to mention this that you can actually extend or lower the your whip to get more speed out of it this is the first one you actually have to do this on so this is like another part of the tutorial i guess you could say even though we're in stage three on hey you can't really make much progress how do you do that well just kind of test around the waters and just see what happens yeah, yeah at least that's intuitive of the game it kind of makes me go oh i need to do something to do this and it doesn't have to have a, a person popping up a tutorial menu or someone screeching in my ear saying you got to do this I do kind of miss games when they had intuitive gameplay design. Most games nowadays, like, they're designed for, well, I mean, I hate to say it, for idiots, like, or babies, like, that you can't, but, like, if you can't figure it out, obviously, the game designer didn't do a very good job of intuitively preparing you for this, like, either by putting something in your way or something to say, hey, you need to maybe, like, consider doing this or something to get to the next area, but... Most games nowadays just like throw a wall of text at you or put a, a um, like an aerator or something like that that just tells you and won't shut up. Hey, listen! Uh, we got uh, your merman around here. I'd say the only annoying thing about the the, chain, the whip direction thing is if you want to do the down and cross, you have to actually jump up to, to do that. So, Oop. Yeah, this part was a little dangerous just because of the... Uh, platforms falling down. I actually did almost die. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. I said, the game's still easy, but it does start throwing off a little bit of a challenge here later on. So, a little bit. I wouldn't say anything too great. That is another level that has a really catchy theme. Like I said, not my favorite soundtrack, but uh, but I applaud that what they what they were trying to do with the soundtrack to make it, like I said, more punchy and catchy. Stuff like that, so. I probably missed quite a few, actually. Um, 
uh, heals. Whoop. Yeah, see, and, and the, obviously in this game, they don't have the you have to move in that direction type of thing when you jump. Dang it. I mean, the dagger is fine. It's just, you know, there's clearly better sub weapons in this game. The ones that are useful, anyway. Uh oh. Yeah, I forgot about that. Whoops. Oh well. Yeah, second death. Huh. Surprising. Actually, I died more times than I did in Castlevania Legends, so there is that. Um, yeah, I forgot. I forgot that the that the mermen are sort of considered even if you're on the. Um, wait for those to fall. Uh, even though you're on that whip thingy, you still you still are considered being on that this plane. So there's a, a chance to uh, get hit by those mermen. So. And like I said, I'm being a bit uh, loosey goosey when it comes to like the gameplay and everything like that. So to my detriment, more than it, more than the games, really. But yeah, I feel like this game's music is more atmospheric than the previous ones. If that makes sense. Like in the previous game, they were designed like an arcade, so you're you're having a scene or a setting as you uh, run through. But this one's trying to set up a uh, not scene. Um, well, you know, they're set of board. You know, arcades had boards, which is the stage you're in. I mean, this game has a stage too, but I don't know what the. I'm not sure what I'm trying to go with this on. Um, but yeah, this 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 game is trying to set like a atmosphere first before anything. Don't spit at me, gross. It even has that little stream, like a uh, spit stream. You know, that comes out from afterwards. Oop. Okay, good. That would have sucked. Um, what? Yeah, you can tell they were trying to do a lot of... Um, tri not trial. Uh, they're trying to test a lot of uh, just different instruments and sound fonts with this. So, they're, so I mean, it sound this soundtrack's almost... Except for maybe the stuff at the beginning. It's almost a completely different soundtrack. Like, you wouldn't almost recognize... See, every bad thing that can actually, actually happen in this level has been happening to me. I said, if you're a, a good player or a d decent player, you wouldn't be falling for this type of stuff. But I do, because that's that's how I work, baby. I gotta show you how bad, how 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 what what a terrible player would be like. Yeah, that's it. I said, you still can die. It's just uh, it's just you know, if you're me, you you only die if you're me, basically. Yeah, sometimes I almost prefer games with uh, with with uh, s more atmospheric music than straight up action music, but it really depends on my mood, what games I'm playing. Like a game like Castlevania, it kind of makes sense. I mean, obviously, if I didn't play any of the other Castlevanias, uh, it would be perfect. But in this case, since I'm more aware of what type of music Castlevania can have, ah! okay then. <laughs> I fell for the, I fell for the, I let go and it dropped me off the plane because this game still has the, um, um, the, if you hit a certain spot on the board, you will fall off and die. That's just how it is. So, so this game is coded like that. So, there we go. So yeah, another, another case of me dying stupidly. And I'm fine with that. Like I said, this this game's so easy overall that I can't really complain about that. It's more funny when it happens to me more than anything. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Because overall, this game is pretty well polished. Um, oh, I, I almost did it again. Crap. It's because of the way that, that uh, the creature or the bone dragon or whatever it is, the bone serpent, is set up. Okay, this might be one of the few times where the axe is actually useful as a sub item because I don't want to get, I don't want to accidentally grab the thing again and then get hit by him. So at least I grabbed some of them in time. Yeah, I can't believe I almost fell for the same. Hmm. Let me see. Yeah, I didn't jump far. I wasn't far enough on the edge to uh, jump, and so I uh, just insta died. So, well, like I said I didn't say this game was. The easiest in the series, like I said, that's still Castlevania Legends, but uh, still. Then again, it is me playing, so.
but like I said, it's still funny to see me die in such interesting ways. I'm like, okay, what are, what what do you got for me now, game? What what's gonna happen? Well, I did say this game was pretty well polished. I I still stand by that, but now that I think about it, there is there is still some situation where I go, like going, hmm, well. There's probably a few things that aren't perfect in this game. Oops. Oh, come on. Just dropped on down. I'm gonna throw axes at you all day long. You can't stop the axe throw. No sir, re Bob. There you go. Oh, didn't get a chance to go get it. Now let's see if we can actually jump this and not like actually Oh, come on. Are you serious? Ugh. I did the whole thing. I, I have a bad habit of doing this in games where um, if there's a jump mechanic there, I'll try to jump on the very edge, and most games don't follow that pattern when it comes to jumping, if that makes sense. You can't just, like... Uh... Let's see. You can't just, like, jump on the edge and, like, follow through. That would... I'm, I'm trying to get... It's basically, I'm trying to jump while I'm walking, if that makes sense, while I'm doing this. Uh, and sometimes I'll try to, like, wait till the last second to jump off, and that's not how a lot of these games' mechanics work. Usually you just want to stand at the edge, and then you jump. But I kept walking, so. Like I said, humor error, human error on that part. So. so much for blazing through the game, huh? Well, I told you I wasn't, I was a... I was a bit of a silly, silly goose when it came to this game. I could just, like, save my hearts and uh, just jump stab this guy instead, so. Come on down. Yeah, you have to hit him in the head to get any sort of resistance, so. Ah, dang it. Oh, well. Dang it! Is this really gonna be the, like the hardest part of the game for me? Is just this part? Oh come on! <laughs> oh jeez, I can't believe I died of that. All right, all right. Yeah, we have to do the level all over again. So, well, all right. Well, no one wants to see me redo the whole level again. So I'll be right back when I get back to that part. All right, we made everybody back here finally. But it actually didn't take me that long at all. But uh, yeah, I'm so t <laughs> I'm actually I'm still laughing at myself after dying like just so many times in the same spot. It's like this is the most dangerous jump ever, and I must I must beat it with with fluidity. And yeah, I didn't die or hardly took any damage getting back here. Of course, that's what happens. Not on screen, of course. Can't show you my perfect perfect Super Castlevania run. Is the envy of all speedrunners. I wonder what is the fastest time to beat this speed running one. Probably an hour or something like that, I bet. Wouldn't be surprised. But anyway, yeah. That's all it takes. All it takes is a simple jump. Yet I couldn't do that. Oh boy. <laughs> I am so I am so I am so silly. Oh yeah, I forgot to show this mechanic off, actually. Um, one of the other we interesting things about this game is, other than the whip, obviously, the directional whip, is if you hold down the attack button with the whip, you can actually swing it all over the place and get like multiple hits back to back. Pretty cool, actually. Like I said, makes sense from a whip standpoint. Uh, oops, got some, oops, well, there goes the meat I got. Some sword skeletons there. I would have said swords men, but they're, I don't think they're men anymore more after losing all their skin. What do you, what do you say, viewers? Is that true? Mm -hmm. But anyway. Yeah, I don't know why I just had trouble on that jump there, but uh-oh. Uh uh-oh. We got ourselves a dangerous situation. There's water there. It's coming up and down and up and down and up and down. Uh-oh, we got ourselves a dragon man over here. Or the uh, Hydra or something like that, anyway. I said another one of the few instances of a... Uh, of, uh, useful sub weapon section but could still probably could easily still do this with a um, which is my whip there we go haha -ha. not too difficult yeah I did take some damage but you know I mean, I'm getting a level for that as well. Alright. 
Well, looks like we're on to uh, onto stage four of Castlevania. What awaits us as we make our way up? Will we finally enter Castlevania specifically? Will Belmont be able to um, show off his prowess and web, web swinging skills put Spider-Man to shame? Find out next time in the next episode of Super Castlevania 4. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time. Hey, what are you looking at, bonehead?